Good afternoon. This is Michael Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates. This is a Friday afternoon on January 20th, 2023. Um, I'm going to take a quick look at the seven-day forecast. I'll post the for, uh, seven-day later on. But um, I just want to do a quick video kind of discussing our upcoming snow chances. Um, Sunday, I'm not really going to get too deep into um, the storm next Wednesday. Right now, it's looking pretty promising. And um, but you know, of course, it's still several days away and things could change. But uh, we're going to take a look at how things look right now. Uh, I'm not going to get into the water vapor loop and all that. Uh, just just so you all know, I mean, I'm going to show you model data right now and kind of talk about you know what the models have. As you all know, I don't forecast by the models, but they are uh, good for visuals at times. And of course, they're they're good for helping to forecast if you know what you're looking for. And probably when I start getting into Sunday and Monday is when I, as the storm's getting closer to, uh, to shore, uh, that's when I'll really begin to look at how things look on the water vapor loop. And that's when I start to take a look at the yeah, you know, the sea level pressures and the, the storm pressure falls and, you know, all the things that go into making the, uh, the you know, determining where the storm is going to go. I'll get into all that on Monday, you know, Sunday or Monday as the storm gets closer. Right now it's way out in the Pacific and I just, it's too early to be very specific on things. And as we well know, these things can change on a, at the drop of a hat. This storm I'm actually not feeling too bad about. Here's a look at the seven day forecast. Again, I'll post this later on as well as its own entity. But, uh, you know, we're again looking at, at Sunday. Tomorrow's going to be kind of chilly. We're going to be seasonably chilly for the next probably a couple of weeks anyway. Uh, we've started off with, I think, maybe our, about our fifth warmest start to January on record. And that's uh, taking its back seat to. Uh, to end this month, so we'll be seasonably chilly and maybe even get a little bit colder than average for a change by the end of next week behind a uh, snowstorm. But uh, we'll be kind of chilly tomorrow. Shouldn't see much. Maybe a stray flurry tomorrow, but I really don't think so. Um, we'll have a storm system coming in Saturday night into Sunday. We could see an onset of snowfall Sunday morning, maybe in the pre-dawn hours. It may actually, if this system comes together, it's coming in two pieces and energy is going to be transferring from one to the other. And you'll see the, the two channels, uh, you know, in the model data. Um, if it comes together faster, we could, you know, pick up a couple inches of snow here in Madison County. If it does it slower, then that would uh, happen over in Ohio, and we might get a you know a dusting to maybe an inch. So Sunday doesn't look super impactful, but prepare for the idea that there's an outside chance that it could turn into a semi-decent snowfall. Beyond that, uh, we're going to be largely in the 30s. We may push up around 40 on Tuesday, but late in the uh, day on Tuesday, that temperature will begin to fall. Uh, Wednesday's high is probably going to happen right after midnight. Most of the day on Wednesday is going to be in the lower 30s, maybe upper 20s as snow is falling. Again, right now, I think an onset of snowfall maybe begins very late Tuesday, probably in the pre-dawn hours of Wednesday and, and an all-day snow on Wednesday, the way things look right now. And then behind that snowstorm, uh, then we'll be looking at a couple of days that are actually going to be relatively cold. We might visit the the teens for one of the few times this winter. So um, I know people don't like to see it, but you know, we can't cry too much. This has been a pretty pleasant winter, all things considered. Sunday system. Uh, we'll take a look here. Again, snowfall is pretty likely on Sunday, especially Sunday morning. The data is still all over the place because the system's not well organized. It's in two pieces. You can kind of see, especially... Uh, on, in the NAM model on the right, and the two snowfall channels, as energy begins to transfer from one to the other, the NAM actually puts the snowfall together uh, in a more coherent fashion just east of I-69 and really leaves Madison County with not much, while the, um, the GFS isn't quite as separated, and so uh, it maybe gives us an inch or so. Canadian data, again, I'm not going to spend too much time on Sunday. 
The Canadian is on the left is a lot more amplified. It brings it together a lot, lot faster. A little bit farther northwest would give us about three to four inches of snow. I think that's overdone, but we can't totally rule it out. And then uh, the European is probably the one I agree with the most. It's, or I'm sorry, I'll get to the European. The one on the right is the UK Met. I actually don't disagree with it horribly. Again, it's a little more. Uh, a little farther northwest with things would uh, give Madison County one to two inches of snow. European, I think, has the best handle on things overall. Again, you know, my forecast has been a dusting to maybe two inches. That forecast is going to stand. The European's kind of in that wheelhouse. So, again, while I don't forecast by the models, I think the European has a pretty decent handle on the Sunday system. Looking at Wednesday, again, I'm just showing the models just to kind of show you different ideas in the data. These things will change. They'll shift northwest. They'll shift southeast. So don't live and die by forecast models. Don't live and die by, oh, the 12Z says this. Now the 18Z gives, yeah, the storm's gone. Now the 0Z, it's back. Oh, the 6Z, and now it's way southeast. Uh, you know, don't do that. You'll drive yourself nutty with these things. It's just a basic idea, and if I didn't agree, didn't think that these were somewhat in the wheelhouse. I wouldn't even show them, but I think they're reasonably in the wheelhouse. So I'm showing you the ensembles rather than the operational models because they're a lot more amplified than what the ensembles are. These are the ensemble mean for different uh, models. The models have, uh, you know, for instance, the GFS runs, uh, I think, 31 different runs and then the ensemble mean is when you take all 31 of those runs and combine them and get the average of it that's what you're getting from these means on them you're taking all of the different ensembles that these models run all the different scenarios and then kind of coming up with the average of it and i think the ensemble means are reasonably uh, reasonably good and uh, you can see the canadian on the left a little bit more northwest uh, you know Whereas the GFS on the right is a little more amplified, brings the heaviest snow right through Madison County, somewhere in the six to seven inch range. We'll take a look at uh, here is the EPS. The EPS again is, is the Europeans version. It has 51 total ensembles. So it's, it's run a lot more data and a lot more different parameters. And I think overall it's kind of on the, on the right track. I don't think the snowfall band is going to be this wide. You kind of get the, the wider snowfall band on these, uh, you know, by snowfall band. I don't mean the, uh, I think the main snow is going to happen kind of right in here. I should have used black instead of white, I guess. Kind of right in here. So all of these that are kind of way back here, there will be some snow back there, but the main snowfall events are probably going to be right through central Indiana, kind of the I-70 corridor. I think it's going to be a pretty traditional I-70 track, maybe north of I-70 a little bit for the heaviest snow. Um, the way these things tend to go, I wouldn't be surprised for the heaviest snow to actually fall up around Lafayette and Kokomo. So uh, and that's just kind of what they tend to do. But overall, I think the European has a pretty good handle on it, the ensembles do. Um, if, uh, I said in a video the other day, if I had to make a forecast right now, I would go three to six inches for Madison County. But, you know, if we start off with a little bit of rain, then we'll be closer to the three inches. If it's all snow, I think we'll be closer to the six inches. So that's just kind of the way I'm looking at things right now. But I just wanted to show you these models, kind of give you an idea of what things look like from this distance. Again, I'll start to really break down what I see on satellite and in the water vapor and in the pressures. You know, the uh, you know, as we start getting within inside of you know, 24 to 48 hours, I'll start looking at balloon data to see you know how that lines up with what the uh, modeled skew T's are, because sometimes you, you start looking at the actual data and none of the models have any kind of a clue, and that's when I end up forecasting something different than all of them. So, uh, and that happens semi-frequently. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out. I'll start getting into all that stuff Sunday and Monday. This is all just kind of just a visual to show you uh, the potential for Sunday and more importantly, the middle of next week. 
So and that way you have time to plan ahead. If you have anything going on next Wednesday, it is most likely, I'd say 75% chance it's going to be pretty impacted on on your, your plans on Wednesday. So you might have some contingencies laid out for that day. So this is you know, all I've got for you for now. I just, again, just kind of giving you a, a little overview of what's maybe coming. Um, again, please support this page, help keep it going. I, I'm happy to announce that I've you know, gotten renewals from uh, Madison County uh, Federal Credit Union and from a uh, Waitman Realty Group, uh, you know, probably upcoming from a um, community hospital as a couple new sponsors. So uh, again, thank you to the sponsors. They're helping keep this going. Thank you to those of you who, if you can't get on madcoweather.com and do a dollar a month or $2 a month, you know, then it, you know, at least please keep interacting with the Facebook posts because that's helping to generate a little bit of money as well. So there's all the details of, uh, to help donate to the page, help support the page, help keeping it going. And again, ultimately, I would love to get to where the page makes enough that I could have somebody else, you know, pay them to help do this so that I don't have to do it all myself and so that I, I get some other eyes on this on this whole thing. So at any rate, that's all I've got for you right now. I've run on a little too long. This is Michael Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates. Thank you.